Welcome back to Well That Didn't Work Politics. This is uh, I believe session six of the Trail of the Jade Last Time. Last time, Trail of the Jade Last Time, our investigator came across a very interesting character by the name of Charlie Hunter. One cuckoo for cocoa puffs kind of individual. However, what did intrigue them is the fact that he did have a couple of these facts. And in fitting a couple puzzle pieces together, they came across a noise in a shadow. Kind of really got their curiosity back. And he somehow managed to talk them into coming back to the museum to steal some artwork for them. And we have a load of groups, or we have a load of groups at this point. Degenerates. We'll go with degenerates. <laughs> I'm a doctor. Hey. I resemble that term. So we're going to open the next scene up. About an hour, hour and a half later, you guys have been together and grinding over the whole thing, you know, kind of quizzing back and forth. Uh, Carl, I've said it enough. <laughs> your character's name is Mike. Arcadi? Arcadi. Arcadi. Okay. So we'll, we'll figure out his name. <laughs> so they've been chit chatting back and forth with Arcadi, getting to know him and understand that Carl Dupree is a very well pays very well. So sometimes it pays to put up with a little bit of craziness. So we're we're pushing probably about four o'clock at this point. And standing out front is a portly Hispanic man who happens to recognize Cody. Oh, how are you, my friend? Very good, very good. So, we don't have long. I have another tour that you're going to be going to. But it's a very, very short tour. So, if you wouldn't mind, let's press on. <clears throat> and as he turns around, he opens the door and waves everyone in. And for the next 15, 20 minutes, he spends some time going through various different local local exhibits, uh, some of it some geology exhibits, different different rocks in the world, things that have been uh, found in the, the local area. Um, he's got a few, um, you know, small wing where it's nothing but uh, dedicated to local artists. So this is not what you would consider to be a modern day museum. This is more of a, a small, almost, uh, I, I'd say like a three-story house that's been converted to where each floor has a different type of art. So he takes you guys through and floor after floor after floor after floor until you reach the top floor. And as you get to the top floor, he looks across and says, so is our plans here, our plans here. We have local archeologists who have been out on various expeditions and found quite a bit of our own local history. Now, the Native Americans of, of our area, and we have the Illini tribe. We have the Chickasaw tribe. The Iowa tribe. The Osage and the Quapaw. They all lived in this region for the last, could be two, three, four hundred years. I don't, we don't know. Um, there, there were nomadic people that traveled, but they mostly stuck to the mountains. And we found tons and tons of artifacts. So the museum stores some stuff, some of our more pristine objects. We like to teach some of our local skill children, you know, young children, school children, about their local history. And with no further ado, I'd like to invite you in. Our Native American wing, and he opens the door, and you see pedestals, display cases, paintings and drawings. Um, there's rock there that they've actually collected and put onto different pedestals and put up different pictures and things of that nature. Um, you see some full uh, re recovered, you know, 
headdress. You see the uh, the bone dress and the things that they would wear in more tribal functions. Um, and you do see a small exhibit of what looks like a cheap cigar store Indian standing in the corner. <laughs> it stands out like a sore thumb. And he looks over and says, oh, don't mind us. I, I apologize. This is, this is a, an area where normally we bring the school board to make sure that there's a photograph of the entire class. This is the class that has to make their, their annual break. But feel free to take a look around and ask me any questions you may have. Got any uh, little? You got the show stuff. You got like artifacts, statues, stuff. Pardon me, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bobby. <laughs> no, it's Rick. Rick. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, of course we do. Um, let's see. There's, there's this. We we have these these small dolls that have been created that. You know, I think that the archaeologist that found them said that these were children's dolls stuffed with wheatgrass and hay. Um, we have a couple of these little carved, you know, stone figures that are over here. Um, we have a couple of, uh, you know, wooden figures that have been cut out. What, what, what would you like to see? Here? I didn't get your name. It's Alonzo. Um, yeah. Can I make like a spot figure? And where's the restroom? <laughs> <laughs> Down the hallway to the left. So none of us passed? None yep. of you passed. Okay. Well, then let's get straight to the point. I'll push this. Uh, do you have. Uh, you were tracking me, right? Go ahead. I figure, like, the consequence being that, like, I look like I'm snooping and looking for something to steal. Pretty much. Well, my friend here, he had a small group of, of individuals that he wanted to bring in order to be able to learn more about our culture. Yeah. Well, Between you and I, obviously, he talks from around here. No, you, you can tell that. Um, where, uh, what did the, the Indians hunted uh, a lot, too? Uh, did they hunt deer? Well, that, that's one of the main staples of their, their, their diet that, that they had. You'd think there'd be more deer stuff. Oh, obviously, but yes, we, we do have one, but it's not in the greatest of repair. Oh, really? Oh, That's okay. Good. Okay. So, he's, he breaks off the conversation about half a second. Pardon me for a second. Sir, you seem to be getting very, very close to some of these artifacts. And they, I apologize, they are very, they're hard to come by. They're unrepairable. This is, this is our fault. So I'm going to have to ask you to step back from the the display that you're close to. We'll, you know, you, you feel free again to ask me any questions. I'd be more than happy. Doctors it. always feel they can do whatever they want. Oh, but you're uh, a doctor. He's a doctor. I have this itch. He's good at that. <laughs> Boy, do I have something for you. He's got some talcum powder. <laughs> Pens and Ian death powder. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, oh, oh! So you don't put sometimes the the best ones are the ones that are the worst case. I thought that's what you yeah. always said about. I don't dis I don't disagree. Now, if I'd be happy to show you, but it's actually downstairs. We have it in we have it in our our restoration room. Oh, I see. Oh, so you got other stuff down there too that's not up here. Well, I did tell you that we do store those items. Of course, as a museum, we do have to restore. Them. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I wouldn't mind seeing some of that stuff too. I mean, I'm not any educated man or anything. I always like to, you know, when you're going to place, you know, what the real pristine stuff, you got some character where you can see where it's been, you know, where the earth is, you know, what it's like. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I think so. 
sure do. And he looks over across. Young man, you don't seem to be engaged very well here. Uh, I was just letting them ask their questions. I'm actually, uh, I'd be going along for a school trip uh, to the USO. I'm here uh, for a uh, Uh, I'm here for Professor Buckley. He sent me here. Up. He, oh, he's a great man. We we thoroughly enjoy the fact that he sends oh, us okay. so much of this. Okay. So much of this. Message. I'm actually one of his students. Um, he sent me here to uh, to sketch out one of the uh, the artifacts that that you have um, in the museum. But I was gonna give get me a to persuasion roll. Yes, some <laughs> vagrant ran off with many of his drawings. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get advantage for that? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, sadly, I'm not going to put that. We need to be in here, so. <laughs> yeah, he's, um, I don't remember which. Art but let's, let's leave the studying so to much the school, study. to the classroom for that. You know, it, all, all of this has already previously been documented. Um, I, well, we only have a few minutes, maybe 15 or 20 left. So well, that's the thing. that's what Someone we had when we came in. We'll invite you back. <laughs> he he lost the uh, the records of it. Some I didn't hear. Someone ran off with some of his stuff. He got robbed. That is a, that is unfortunate. And but he's just wondering if you could. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> right now, I do not have your time. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, no. No, I do not have time. But well, let us. I understand. I understand. Statue. No, but there. I have a wooden statue of a deer. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. But that is again in our restoration room. So it, it, it's a small group. We do have a little bit of time. Follow, please feel free to follow me down. And he leads you down to past the main office. Say again. I <laughs> All right. And when we go into the when we go into the room, I'm going to check the lock on the door. I'll be going in to make sure I need to see something, if I can, to the window or something. Okay, feel free. So as you guys go in, he, he brings you in. Now, I do have to ask everyone to wear these gloves. He starts handing out some like white um, cloth gloves. Just in case we happen to have to pick up or touch any of these artifacts, I don't want any of these oils or greases in anyone's hands. Now, again, I do say, and I will apologize. Your hands. Oh, that's not a problem. And he opens the door. He <laughs> no takes, jars of pee. He takes a couple steps in, <laughs> opens the door, and stands there at the edge of the door. And kind of see a couple of desks. Pottery looks like the crime scene. He goes, Excuse me for one second. And he walks over and pulls a tray out of the bookshelf. And he sets the tray down. He goes, I do believe this is the statue that you were referring to. And he picks up the shield. Again, he steps out. Made out of wood. Unfortunately, the sheath's been damaged. Don't know where it's at, but there's an antler missing. Hmm. Well, yeah, that's not as would you know it's been around. So I do believe this is what you were wanting to look at. He holds it over closer to you to be able to look at. Roll me a. Uh, did you take forgery? Oh. Yes, I did. All oh, right. That roll is me my career. Roll me a forgery, sir. Can I pick up something? Yeah. Oh, that's that's interesting. This is pulled out of an archaeological dig. How how can you have? Uh, your paperwork appears to be in order, and. In, uh, 
I, I made him call the owners of the museum. I would like everybody to roll me an eight. Is that a hard? Nope. Mm -hmm. All right, you're holding steadfast. In fact, you're holding this token. Yep. You've got a regular success. Five. Okay. You're too busy, and I want you to roll me a, uh, a spot hidden. So you can start looking for the what you were you were about to take. Uh, Doug, you have this idea, and something is popping through mm. your head. What's a bribe to get into the museum already? Scotch? <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you passed your, your spot hidden check? Yeah. Okay. So you notice that it's not very secure. There's no bars in there. Small tells over there. The glass has kind of been painted or frosted, you know, maybe whitewashed. Who knows? Um, and then it's a skeleton. It's like skeleton key. It's not a, I mean, it's not a, this is not a serious thing. It's local, local activity. It's like a sort of right. <clears throat> so I'm going to make sure that that's on well, right now he's holding a statue up in front of you, but he's now looking over at, at oh. our gentleman friend here who is showing him paperwork <laughs> that this statue belongs to him. Well, not to me. I'm afraid I'm, I'm going to have to call the owner so that we can get this. See, I don't own it. The museum owns this, and, and I'm just a curator. My friend. Ancient artifacts of human years. But I, I, I'll, 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 I'll let, let me put this up and we'll, we'll go call the owners and, and sort this out. And as he puts it back down, he goes away. And turns to go pick a tray up. Now, I don't think we need to call any of the owners. I understand. Because I cut him. Jack cut. <laughs> <laughs> but. But. What this meant to this man came. You have to understand. We're here asking about a statue that no one has seen that you and you. And the people who were It hasn't been on display. No. There's no, no reason no. anybody would know about it. So why on earth? Very logical question. What we have for you. Because we, we came prepared to make sure that our butts were covered. And the wood cup. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Bobby. We not only have come with a gift for you for making this thing a thing, but we have a replica. One made of similar types of wood that you could put on display. You see, I'm just, a, I, I'm, I'm a humble curator. Understand. You know this. This. This is. Although things come are off. Yeah. Like who knows when and where and how it could be found? But uh, you see, I have to display these objects to make sure that they are lived in. And and. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you would make that in a week? This is an ancient artifact. No, I make, sir, I, I, it is a small museum, but I do make it. Um, 
just from viewing it. Off of one <laughs> artifact? More than 50 damage? This isn't me. I suppose you could say that the king of Sunday died with you. I see. Well, it's not my legal right to say I don't know. Someone will lose a job. <laughs> well, you see. We've got. this point, the legal battle does begin. He kind of straightens up and goes, You are right. Money. You're showing me documents that you are the rightful owner. We represent you. And it's all legal title. For all intents So again, I, I did tell you, it's King of Sunday. No, hundred dollars. Agreed. One hundred dollars does sound like a fair price. Oh, oh no no no. Oh, Scott, are you a purveyor? Of course I am. I sit in a museum all day. Doug, go out to the car and fetch a couple bottles. So he kind of holds out his hand while he's holding on to the statue. <laughs> now come back. Professor, Professor, here. Sent me out to get these, right? Indeed. Of course they did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Want to roll to fill this yeah, scotch with piss? <laughs> <laughs> so he hands you over the scotch. Now, if you don't mind, gentlemen, I do have some other business. You know that I have to explore this place. I would strongly suggest you depart. All right, so you guys head out. I'm assuming that's what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. All right, what do we want to do next? Uh, deliver this beer to Charles. All right. So, but are there weapons that mark you? Right? They're reset. So I can make a weapon. Of course. Now, the, the little wooden thing that you gave me, I assume that was just that wasn't really a copy. I thought, I thought it was just like yeah. some little kid it's, carved it, you know. It's a random joke. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Same no one kitchen. will tell the difference. But it's <laughs> just a crude deer. Pretty much. It's, it's got two sticks and it looks like one of those little word things that they put a string around. Catches it with a repeater. It's a Christmas ornament. He drops in water and flour. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a stick, man. But we glued antlers. <laughs> so we go. Okay, so we go back. So you guys head to the house. Charles is standing there at the door, kind of you can see this face like poke out, poke back in, poke out, poke back in. As you guys are all getting out of the car, he goes, "Did, did you find my deer? Did you find my deer?" Where, where are you able to find it? Can you get it? Drop pad is so easy. What do you think? Oh, oh are you good? Did you we get didn't it? get I told it. You, I'm not as good as Indiana Jones, but I'm second best. Absolutely correct. He just pulls back his hand. 
you got my gear? And he jumps up and grabs you and gives you a giant hug. <laughs> and as he steps back, he goes, looks at his hands again, he goes, Anyway, where's the deer? Where's the deer? Where's the deer? So he takes a look at the deer. Broken. Where's its antler? I imagine brush. Rock. No, 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 no. I know the deer was when, when, when I was told it was, it was intact, it came from the dig site intact. He looks over and he goes, Folder, the papers that you left here. He even has a drawing. There's a, there's a deer. It has the antler. By all means. He will drive back. Hey, where's our antler yet? <laughs> <laughs> we gave you two extra bottles of scotch over the hundred dollars. So. Charles looks over the, at the at the deer and he grabs it and he goes back over to the to the table where he has a stew already sitting. He goes and he looks over at you, uh, Doug. And goes, Can you help me figure out how how to attach this one? Uh, you need to see wrong. Uh, and what's your last one? Intelligence. Oh yeah, I got it. So he. You know, he kind of is fumbling through, and you just see that there's a marking that looks very, very similar to what is already the, the buffalo. So you kind of point that out, and he kind of wiggles it around. He goes, it fits into place. See, yeah, I told you. No, no, it's real. It's real. It, it, see, it's broken. It needs to have its part back. Its antler. <clears throat> it's missing its thing. Has to be the antler that was previously. Would be a cool <laughs> How do you reattach it? <laughs> <laughs> We'll make it work. We'll, we'll get it attached. So you're driving back. <laughs> Arcadi, <clears throat> you have the other one. Could you track both at the same time? Would you be able to try? Give it a whirl. So this is a skill that doesn't necessarily exist. I'm gonna say that this is more of a yeah, art and craft. Yeah, we can go with art and craft. <laughs> You're gonna make him like this. <laughs> that might work for him. Well, I mean, oh, and let's. It would be an arts and crafts check first to see whether or not you could even carve okay. or fashion or something. Go ahead. And make me make it. Right. Nope. Well, the fifty-six. I have a five. Okay. <clears throat> Rope <Rope's> attached. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, he was he was trying to carve out. He had had another right. thing. He'd be trying to carve out. Something. So this that that doesn't appear to be a, a viable option. So, oh. what would you guys like to do? Uh, we're going to go walking up to the deer. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Oh. Charles, I know you have this back. You got a sheet of stuff? In case it comes oh, to that? Uh, I carry it. Oh, there we, we go. All right. That's fine. Now we got we, peace. We <laughs> guns? Guns? Oh, oh, we're not there. Let me show you guns. <laughs> he runs off into the other room. Oh, my. Oh, I thought we left. 
Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, we're, we're, oh, we're you guys already left? Yeah, we're in yeah, the we're, we're okay, driving. Never mind. Right. So we're walking up the steps. Damn it, that was going to be funny. <laughs> extra one? <laughs> <laughs> I can no. get you a piece. I know a guy. Okay? You really want a piece? I get you. You know how to handle a piece? I've had some, I've had some training back at home. Okay. Yeah, no problem. You want to tell me what you want? Huh? That's easy. It's a white man. It's, it's American, American. So, uh, okay, so we're walking up there, and we're going to... Are you going with them, or are you staying? So you, you head up to the museum, <laughs> and the museum is currently locked. The front door is locked. Do I, do, do I see a car out front? No, there are no cars. Okay. Was I able to uh, jimmy the, the window? Well, you would notice that it's a basic lock. It's not going to be extremely difficult. I have yeah. no trouble. I you have a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, I will tell you this. You can attempt it. And if you attempt to push it, the worst case scenario is you break the glass. Why not just start? Huh? Start with breaking the glass. <clears throat> Or I'm or look. climb up to the next level and open one of the windows gonna, that are probably right, not check locked. A couple of a couple of windows and see if this is a, do a spot hidden. If you get a hard success, I'll allow you to have a window that's open. I mean, this is a this is a three story you know, old uh, house in the thirties when they weren't locking stuff anyway. <laughs> I got a forty one. Did you pass it? Like, yeah. Well, I passed. I but. passed, but not with a hard knock. Okay, so you guys do see some windows that you know are off. Possibly could be open, but you don't see one that was specifically locked that way. I told you. No, no, you're no. you're looking at about maybe five or six feet. So we weren't gone that long. He said he had other. So maybe he's wandering around. And stuff. No so cars. Stuff. Now that you see, no. So didn't he? Didn't he say that there was going to be a police out? Yeah, he did. He may have locked up the window. It sounds like we're just gonna throw him around. Then. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Let me show you around. Let's. Uh, okay. Uh, we're going to uh, find a door or window that. Out of. Okay. Sight. You gonna go around back? Yeah. Okay. Try to shimmy it open. You see the curator murdering. And I rolled a twenty on whatever stat you need. <laughs> sure, that case, I don't <laughs> think that's how the game works. That would be lock pick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to shimmy it. I'm not trying to pick a lock. I'm trying to shimmy it. Well, if you would like to push it again, you risk breaking the glass. Well, I'm a, okay. Then I'm gonna just assume I'm gonna break it. And oh, I'm I gonna could, do it quiet. I could give it a try before we break the glass. <laughs> I mean, I'm just as good as you are. Okay. So. <laughs> Either we break the glass, yeah, you got, or you, uh, one in a hundred. That's okay. So you're investigative reporter who is good at this stuff. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, I basically try to break the glass quietly, unobtrusively, unless I think I can just shimmy the window. I'm going to give you a fifty percent chance that you just don't make an absolute racket. Okay. Well, I rolled a twenty. Roll it again. Oh yeah. I rolled an 08. An 08. So you're able to kind of. Knock out a little corner piece of the glass, just enough where you can kind of reach it. It's not; it didn't fall in shatter. It kind of just knocked out and then kind of dropped right in front of you. Light it up. Listen for a finish. Nope, you do not hear anything. <clears throat> So you climb back in and you head back to that room. That door is locked. The whole, all the lights are off. Nobody's there. But you can see. That <clears throat> you're gonna have to kick that thing open. I yeah. had a feeling. That, okay. Um, meantime, we can scout the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was about to say. I mean, we can try to. I, I doubt there's a key here, but we could try. <laughs> all right, give me a spot hidden. Um. Twenty-seven. Okay. 
So no, there is no fear. But while you're running around inside, you do hear from the officer and conversation taking place. And at that moment, that door opens. You guys are running. And a gentleman and a young lady, both with fire engine red hair, are standing there in front of that door. And they look out and say, Because our good old friend here, Alonzo, was unaware of what he gave you. I don't know you. I apologize. Let's talk. Let's have some formal introduction. My name is Bryce. Bryce O'Donnell. Bryce O'Donnell. And this is my lovely wife. We own this establishment. I see. So you uh, you purvey and stolen goods all the time? Apparently you do. No. <laughs> you literally <laughs> broke in. <laughs> I see you like stolen things. <laughs> we we came back. We came to get something that uh, we didn't get all of the stuff. Absolutely. So at this point, did you go with me? Okay. Well, let's just say our former employee has provided you with an artifact of uh, sorts. Okay, why? Maybe I can give it back. I believe you could get it back for me, considering you and your friends walked out with it. You yeah, were given. I it. don't possess it. We came to get it for someone else. But only an idiot would come back after they take something. You didn't say we, we picked up something that belonged to someone else. We paid for it to keep things quiet. I'm fast talking. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, might be talking too fast. Twenty-six, so that's a hard success. <laughs> Does it? Do I sound sincere? So why don't you tell me exactly why? Because it's a part of it was broken off. And this gentleman pulls out. Okay. I myself personally was restoring this. So what's so important about this piece? It's just a little wooden, little, little wooden toy. Oh, if you only but knew. But that's not for this discussion. Well, if you want me to help you, I need a little more information. Who said anything about help me? Okay. I can always call the police and have them go and find your, your friends that were here. I sure, Mister, you know, Gonzalez here will gladly turn in anyone who is here to save his own neck from going to jail. Okay, you know, and uh, and when they find out you possess stolen stolen property, my the person that hired me said it was his. What stolen property? Came out of the earth at a dig northwest of town just a few days ago. I don't know all about that. I just know he had the paperwork saying he owned it. it we just Mr. Alonzo looked at that paperwork too, and they turn around. He kind of nods, kind of not sheepishly, but almost disappointed. He looks at you. And at that, the wife almost starts just belittling him about how could you not even call us to come and have this. So, okay, this is so important, and you can't tell me why. Obviously, they don't want to, you know, we could, you know, we can help you get it. I mean, 
I don't. Come in and sit down. Let's see uh, what we can work. Okay. Right. Is there an insight check? Do I? I'm just going to see how threatened. Um, again, that's going to be an idea check. Um. Yeah. Made it. They're pretty threatening right now. <clears throat> you can tell that they're not playing. Yeah, but it wasn't I mean, necessarily as much of an invite as it was a direct statement. Right, but my question is, as far as threatening, how threatening do I feel? Threatening. <clears throat> so do I think they could possibly hurt me? Oh, there's a possibility. Anything. Could happen. Well, no, I understand that, but. <clears throat> okay. So again. The husband looks over and Bryce looks back and goes, please, sit down. What you got to say? <laughs> I always like to stand, okay? I will, I'll talk to you. We'll talk. But I'm not a big, you know, I just, I like to sit, okay? But we can talk. Well, then come in. And I'll keep my back. Okay? Is there a window in there? No, oh, there's a window. <clears throat> It's just like a house. Any other house, it's you know, open room there. <clears throat> okay. And uh, but I'm, but yeah, go, go, go ahead. I'll come in. He's standing at the door. He's waiting for you to come to the dress rehearsal. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we will have a very civil and polite conversation. However, you do have to come in and discuss what you have with me. Or I could just call the police. You did, after all, break into this establishment, regardless of what took place. The onus was on you. So. But of course, the police are going to a whole bunch of questions, too. Perfectly peaceful. I had it all planned. We did. I think we stole it. Yes. Oh, well, no. where did Lorenzo put it? That is not my issue. That is my legal issue. Did someone steal that? Sounds door? like you had competent so, employees. We want to talk. I don't feel. Do come in and sit down. So now they're going to roll. He passed. He passed with a hard pass. Okay. So that means I have to. You do have to come in okay. and leave. All right. Then I feel like I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'll go, I'll walk in. So you walk in, and he turns, and he closes the door. And without missing a beat, he pulls his gun out and cocks it. He says, now we can discuss this. As Lorenzo lies dying on the floor. And he puts the revolver in his hand. Talk to me. Yeah, so what do you you obviously know that something is awry with this guy. Oh, I know now that something's awry. You just killed a man in cold blood. Well, see, here is where we work out our differences. Our differences. I don't mind if you work out your differences. Quid pro quo. You tell me why you want to kill him. And I will tell you what I can do for you. Here because I was hired by someone to come get it. And who was my friend? Well, now that information, I don't, I'm no schoolie, okay? <clears throat> I mean, and I'm just no school. Now, and you, young man, he's just a college student. He likes making macaroni sandwiches. Get some extra credit. And here I am trying to lay cards on the table. Yet you, you haven't still laid, want to pull you, you haven't laid you the haven't cards. Laid any cards. <laughs> you just are asking us for information, and you ain't giving us nothing. Why is this thing so important? You willing to kill a man over it? You're damn right I'm willing to kill a man over it. Not willing to kill us over it. You have something that I need. Okay, and we have the only way to get it. Yeah, but so your hands are kind of tied as well as ours. Roll me <laughs> fast talk. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. You didn't say oh. anything. 
<laughs> Alright, well, I could push it, and my character could die right here, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm. Let's no, just I say, failed. you came <clears throat> in here to steal from me. I think that that is a glorious opportunity for you. In what? You apparently have access to stealing me as you currently have. As do my wife and I. The only way for you to know about this is because of a certain private agreement. Okay. What could so pre- obviously at this point you're really aware that I know that there's little more So I'm going to ask you to do something And as he pulls out another package, he lays it on the table. Why are you stopping party? <laughs> that was a heck of a stop. <laughs> I didn't know if you knew that. I did. Right I haven't here. talked in a while. So I've got a little diagram. I got a little diagram of how they all fit together. There's, there's quite a few. There's quite a few of them. Seven to be exact. But I know you were hired to come steal one. Now, as you see, my card comes out. And you got an answer. You want a statue for statue? No, I don't want a statue for statue. Okay, so we I'm know. letting you know that I have an answer. Thank you. If you're going after these statues, that it seems to me that I have something else to do. So let me tell you what I know. Okay, yeah, straight talk. Talk around in circles. You did show us that, but you didn't answer. But, and you did show us you're willing to kill somebody. That's pretty important, too. That got my attention. Tell me what you know of the Order of the Phoenix. The what? You talking about like when people go in and they, they, you know, like talk on the mob and then they disappear and you never see them, but they're really somewhere? You're You're talking talking about about rats? No. I want you guys to roll an idea check. (laughs) This was something that was said very, very early on in the campaign. I remember. Um, I'm having trouble remembering my elementary school table game. You're focusing now on the handgun in your pocket. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm trying to decide, well, am I faster on the draw? So, Billy, yes. you recognize, Ooh. you recognize that statement. There was something that was said when the name was John Smith. There was a snippet in his journal. About a society that's running around killing people. And there are major players that are involved with this society. So I'm going to slip back into character here so we can kind of get this. We are. Organization currently runs like big time gangsters. No, <laughs> gangsters are not. Uh, say that again. Well, say it again. Go ahead. Say it again. We deal with the stranger side of things. The side that scares the gangsters. Oh, no, man. Now, some pretty tough jokes. We work for Mr. Lee. We'll just refer to him as one of the big three. 
one thing. You want to know something? Society to witness things? Yes, I do. Now, my wife and I have aspirations for our children. Part of that means we have certain things that we have to deal with. But obviously, we can't deal with that. So, I'm willing to do this. I don't care how they're dealt with. Just or whether they're treated like this poor slut over here. Like a regular Joe. Regular Joes can sometimes be well, let's just say they can be regular Joes. We don't want to be regular Joes, now do we? No. Regular Joes don't have the power that we just showed you. So, well, again, we will skip to the chase. Hey, Colt made all men equal. I am willing to part with this remaining for Mr. Dupree. And he, he's staring dead cold. So, can I roll a bluff or something? Any kind of. No, I'm not going to make you roll a bluff. Okay, well, I failed on that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of another name. <laughs> However, let's just say, if these statues brought together under the right circumstances, we may have an opportunity Take over this organization, this society. So here's what I'm willing to do. I'm going to find where you can work. However, what I'm going to ask of you is that you and your group discredit our police chief police chief isn't it obvious that Mr. Lambert I said is part of the big three yeah well, we already know. have him in the group we have him in the group oh so the you mean the these are other participants the mayor and the police chief? You see a little light bulb flickering. Flickering. It's <laughs> <laughs> trying to come up, you know. <laughs> okay, well that kind of makes some sense, I think. Now, obviously, Mr. What is it that you can do? Because if you remove these individuals from the force, then we rise to our full potential. You could charge court eight twelve space. That's a bit steep, my friend. Oh, and uh, you know, sounds like you got some pretty yeah, yeah, hefty for... aspirations, you know. Yeah. And I mean, I think most of them are guys. You know, what can you say? It's a bit ostentatious, actually. Well, yeah, <laughs> for you to be driving around. Don't you think that would send the wrong message after certain individuals may come up missing? Who's going to come up missing? You just talked about tomatoes. Well, tomatoes, not. You deal with it the way you need to deal with it. Yeah, that's kind of 
do the same. Okay. Um, look, I don't know what all this stuff is. Okay. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what y'all plans are, but it sounds like you got some pretty high big plans. For this. Of course I do. That's why I have to move pawns around the board. We're just on a couple of flips to get some people on the board, which could be true. I'm not saying it's not true. You know, I've played games before. I'll, I'll tell you this. It's a little bit easier to hide, and you can do it, and you can spend it any way you want. I'm willing to give each of you. <clears throat> now, I'll tell you what. Take this statue of token of good faith. And I do believe that your doctor house it when you come. Okay, yeah. Extend to him this image when he inspects it. A printed image. Is he just the invite? Oh, let's see. You think he's uh, uh, the <clears throat> just because he's got Scott? Well, as a member of high society, he won't be out of place in this place. Although, you can be his bodyguard. Look forward to it. Plus two. Plus two. I don't know. Now, if you do not just solve all You do not know the solution. And if you think you're wily enough to get away, but as you see, I have no fear of public opinion. Go both ways, don't we? Uh... But, you know, you seem like you're feeling on Do the we up have an and accord, up sir? in the down low. Um, <clears throat> again, I just work with you. But again, I don't even know how you want to do this thing. But, we'll see. <clears throat> you really have a choice here. Is the, is the, <laughs> this is where it all comes down to, right? I want you both. Now my dice. Exactly. Okay. I can see my hand. Okay. <laughs> I know I still got my hand. <laughs> Daniel? Sorry, Billy. I want you to roll me a dice. Minus 30. Oh, so oh. I failed the good thing. Billy. Sanity check. Minus 30. So add 30, 30 to whatever my roll is. Uh, 62. I'm still sane. Not above my... <laughs> <laughs> yep, I got high sanity. Roll me a d6. Unfair, but go ahead. Five? Be five. Okay. What was it going to be if he failed? failed? He did a ten like before. Huh? I'm glad I'm clueless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. But he this knows was, who This you was are. set up for you to have an issue. I'll be honest uh -huh. with you. I mean, okay. to be fair, I'm the closest to this character. So what you see is staring up at him. Your eyes gaze just past him, looking straight into the blue. And for a split second, you see her eyes. Like how you see her face almost take on human form. Okay, so for red, are we talking bloodshot red or just solid red? Solid like red. Nemorian. Solid red. I decided. I decided. I just blink at it. And you cannot hold back the gasp that lets out. Okay. So uh, as you jump back in your chair. So there is some narrative control I'm taking here. Okay. As you jump back in your chair, 
and she looks at you and says, you don't deserve it. And as you look up, you don't see any of that. But you see who's all sitting there. And that's what we're going to talk about. So guys, hope you enjoyed Call of Cthulhu this evening. And uh, hope you come back next month and uh, keep on adventuring. Keep on adventuring. Good night.